This is Amber Valancourt and I'm here to analyze this intersection. So right here we are at technically a Y-shaped intersection. It's the meeting of three streets. So down here this is Concord Street from the south, Central Street from the west, and Elm Street from the north. And these three streets are all primary streets. Down here we have a secondary street kind of see it's pedestrian crossing that's Danforth Street that feeds into this intersection so I would prefer to call this a four street intersection Danforth is a secondary street and it feeds into the traffic on Concord heading north and south on Concord <clears throat> two of the primary streets at this intersection Central and Elm have designated right turn lanes you can see one going right there and they have straight and left turn lanes. All three of these streets here at this intersection are considered multiple threat situations because when a pedestrian crosses, they'd be crossing more than one lane of traffic. Um, I would consider this a complex intersection for a few reasons, but before I do that, I wanna show you uh, exactly why I think this is a three or a four lane intersection. This is the intersection right here as we are on it. So without Danforth Street, it's Y. With Danforth Street, it becomes a plus shaped intersection. Um, I would consider this a complex intersection for a few other reasons. One of them being that the time to cross that you get from these push button poles and cross signals, they're not audio does not actually match up with the time you need to cross. On average, it took me about 12 seconds to cross each of these sections and light stopped showing at eight seconds to cross or less. Also, there's a lot of ambient sound going on out here um, <clears throat> because there is an intersection down the street through here at Central and Water. And you can also see that traffic has moved Fast. There's a lot of motorcycles in here which are exceptionally masking and we get a lot of traffic down the street here on this hill, and a lot also up the hill. It really carries. Um, so I have a little image for you here. You can see with the compass there's the street names and the directions of traffic each lane has. You've got right turn anywhere it's available so that also makes this a complex situation <clears throat> you can also see here this is a picture showing the designated crossings with the APS signals and the teal arrow shows which direction to cross that post controls so that's also an interesting thing that makes this intersection more complex and lastly part that I think is really com makes this a very complex intersection is the parking lots to the businesses and the blended curbs that kind of can lead a pedestrian more into the center of this intersection. As you can see, it's pretty wide and all the curbs are blended in this area. So the little train track looking areas here show the blended curbs and they're all right there with parking lots. So that can make it challenging to cross, especially with all the ambient sound that's going on. So this is the intersection, it's complex. And even though there's pretty much a designated route by whoever designed this intersection, you can see because of these push buttons and the crossing lines, there's really only one way to get from one side of the street to the other. It still is pretty tricky. But there's a lot of traffic around here, pedestrian traffic. And as you can kind of tell right now, the visibility is good because there's not a lot of opportunity for big sound or visual blockers like trucks parking on the street to get in the way. So drivers and pedestrians who are sighted can see for a while. So that's one of the redeeming factors about this being such a crazy intersection. And that is the end. Thanks a lot.